Good morning guys, bright and early here. Today is the day. If you're a member of the channel, you already know a little bit of the backstory of what's going on today. But if not, you guys saw the video where I said I was saying goodbye to this thing. I am not selling it privately. Although I could get a marginally better price. I found a car, and there's a whole story around this, and it's at Porsche of Naples. And I've been working with them, and they've been awesome to work with. And the best thing about it is they're totally cool with me driving this thing four hours, putting another 200 miles on it, and getting to enjoy what will be my last cruise with this thing before I swap it. I mean, I guess you guys might already know from the title, but it's for another Porsche. I'm a little sleepy, so I'm gonna wait till my brain's working a little bit better, and then I'm gonna give you a little bit more details on what's going down today. It's no secret that we are going to pick up none other than a 992 GT3. I'm gonna give you guys a little bit brief description if you aren't a huge Porsche nerd, uh, what the differences are. So, generations, there's the 991, and the new generation is the 992. There's the 991.1, which is like first generation 991, 991.2, which is the facelift 991, which is what this was, and then 992 is like a whole new chassis. With that being said, the main differences between the GT3 RS and the GT3, GT3 RS is a bit more of a race car, usually rigid ride, wider stands, wider fenders, big air ducts in front of the rear wheels, more aero, and only available in PDK. The GT3, a little bit more tamed down, engines are pretty much the same, known for having a little bit more comfortable ride, a little bit less lightweight stuff, even though the weight is actually pretty much the same as this car from this generation. But the key point is they're available in manual. So we will be getting a manual one, and I'll dive more into uh, the whole manual thing. I don't wanna bore you guys, but I did wanna make a couple notes mentally on this car now, because I find that this video will probably end up having a bunch of comparisons between this car and that car. This car driving around, pretty rigid ride. I was surprised when I first got it how rigid it was, like pulling in places that have like a steep angle or whatever it would literally lift the wheels. Um, I don't mind it. It's a little annoying if I have like a coffee cup in here because the cup holder's not great. I already have the 992 Turbo S, so I know the cup holder and that's much better. Um, infotainment center, not bad. A lot of useless buttons here, uh, but no Bluetooth CarPlay, so that's a huge for this thing. Um, but I love the interior, I love the little Weizach badges and all the carbon and the door pulls. I'm gonna miss this interior, it's really good. But the interior on the new car I know is good too. So if I think of anything else, I'll make note with you guys, but uh, we got a long drive ahead of us. I don't think you guys will be able to hear this with the camera, but with the RS and the air ducts right behind you, you can hear this like little like squeal, like <laughs> every time you get on the gas because they're and I'm definitely gonna miss that. Cause on the GT3s, it like the, the air comes in like over the trunk rather than uh, in front of the rear wheel. We got a tunnel, so you know, we're gonna have to go from real quiet to really a little bit less quiet. There's a cop up there. <laughs> Another thing about this car, I don't know if it's gonna change with the manual, but like Florida highways, we cruise at 90 miles an hour usually. So this thing cruises at 4,000 RPM. With an exhaust, that can get a bit noisy. You know, I made my video uh, last time talking about how sentimental this car was. I talked about all these different reasons why I was gonna miss this car. But I think another thing that was kind of key that uh, a lot of people don't realize is this car was kind of the door that opened me up to the Porsche community. And by that I mean, without this car, I wouldn't have been involved with the GT3 Smokies crew. Met all the awesome guys from 311 RS and I know exotics usually have like a bad taste in people's mouths with the owners being snobby and stuff. And I can assure you guys that GT3 owners, GT3 RS owners, the exact opposite. In the end of the day, these are like bare bones driver's cars. And I met so many awesome people, so many friends, so many down to earth dudes that are also really successful in whatever business or job they may have. It's just a really cool community and I'm glad that I'm not bailing on this thing without another GT car. of Naples to give a little bit of background I was doing demos with Vaughn I got an Instagram message from a follower by the name of Zach that works at Porsche of Naples of a very cool car that they had available it's a paint to sample 992 GT3 and it's in one of my favorite specs that I'd ever seen from the previous generation I had no intention of ever getting a 992 GT3 
thought hadn't even crossed my mind. When this car popped up, I started chatting with them to see if it was a possibility of maybe working something out, trading this car or selling it. And here we are. We're here. Porsche of Naples. Look at that. It's, oh man, there's another orange one. Let's take that one. <laughs> I can't believe this is really happening. I, I can't believe you're going through with it. I know. This is sad. Is this the first time I've ever traded a car into the dealer? I, I know, but you've been genuinely sad. You've been texting me as you've been putting this stock exhaust back on. Like, I'm so sad. I'm so sad. But today's an exciting day. It I is. think I'm over the sadness. Yeah. Dang, yeah. that's what I want. I feel like you're always gonna think about owning a manual one and you just need to live this through. Yep. You just need to stop talking about it and do it. I love here. the PDK. The PDK is amazing. I never wanted the manual in the beginning because this is like the most fun thing in the world, but I, I've done everything I need to do with it and I feel like having a manual just brings some excitement to a car that I've already kind of gotten used to, you know? Yeah, let's do it. K-Band ruining my clip. <laughs> We're gonna be revealing it to you. Wait, so you said it's covered up right now? You wanna see my devil? Looks like a Batmobile with the cover on it. Yeah. yeah. This is so cool. When he pulls that off, it's a done deal. Colette, I think you're going to pull it off. What? I'll put you on the spot. It's like the beginning of video games and you just like pull it off, right? Wait, where, how do you do this? I don't know how to do that. You got a coacher. Yeah, how, how so do you do So the best yeah. for this car is to pull from the back so the wing doesn't catch. You just oh gotta pull gosh. real fast. Just don't scratch real the paint. Fast? Don't scratch the paint. Yeah, you freak out if something is even close to the car, much less this being on it. You got the whole dealership watching you do this right I now. No, wait, it has to be really fast though. I mean, oh no, gosh. it doesn't have to be. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Drum roll. Wait, 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 wait. I don't know. Okay, yeah, maybe. Okay, ready? Go for it. A little slow. A little slow. <laughs> no, you're good. Shocking. Oh my gosh. Wow. The color is a little different in person. I liked it though. Yeah. It's more like matte. There's a friend of mine, Chris Meeker, who had this exact spec 901.2 <laughs> that would uh, drive the Smokies with us. And I remember seeing that car and I was so yeah. hyped on it. So when you sent me a photo of this car and it was pretty much identical spec to his, it was like... Yeah, the interior matches your other car too. I know. So the deviated <laughs> stitching plus the paint to sample. <laughs> What do you think about the front bumper? About what? The black? Yeah. Are you gonna? Are you digging it in person more, or you think you might paint it? I don't know. You know how the uh, the Tourings have like the painted front yeah. section? Yeah. I was thinking about doing that. The lightweight bucket seats change at all? No, it's identical to your. Look at that. <laughs> the Prindle. We're manual now. <laughs> like wow. No, I'm excited. So I've never driven a manual Porsche. So when I, when I say these things though, people will go and find a video that I'll forget about, but I don't think I've ever driven one. A friend of mine uh, let me drive his GT4 that was manual. We are at Atlanta Motorsports Park, put it in gear, pulled it up 10 feet on grade and the track got shut down. And I was always scared, I was always scared to drive them though because I knew I'd want one and I didn't want like buyer's remorse of getting my RS, right. but I'm excited to have the experience. Ooh, I like the yellow accents. Um, I don't think I did the yellow tack. No. I'm not a big fan of the clock, not a big fan of the colored tack. But I am. I'm yeah, glad we have it. <laughs> yeah, so my biggest complaint about the Turbo S, I don't know if you noticed driving these, the, uh, the steering wheel blocks the gas gauge. Yes. It's annoying as hell. Yeah. So I drove a Turbo S around the entire state of Florida and I was constantly paranoid I was going to run out of gas. Show me the track mode. Comes with AC. Love that. Gear shift assist. Yeah. There's like an actual shift light and yeah, stuff. For a new car, there's a lot of error messages going on right now. I don't know. <laughs> so, <clears throat> might have to actually turn it on to do the track mode. Just so you guys know the story behind this car. Uh, so someone ordered it and then bailed on it, so that's why it's sitting here. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, unfortunately, he just uh, decided he wanted a Touring instead. Well, fortunate so, for us. Works for you. It's a light clutch pedal. <clears throat> so there's your sport and then you go into track mode. I like that. And you can adjust actually exactly what you want when you're in track mode. Yeah, maybe because the Turbo S is just intended for going fast to the office, that's why there's no track mode. <laughs> so see right track here, view. If you select track view, it's wow. going to change up what the screen looks That's like. sick. And then you can actually see your fuel gauge 
which is nice. I need to just drive around like that all the time. So most people do. Yeah, that's cool. So you actually see these bars on the sides of the tack on mm -hmm. both sides. As you come up towards red line, those will actually light up as like a shift light. So in the past, I'm I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> I, I did break in that car that, that I'm trading in. I mean, I'm not gonna say it, but I usually don't believe in the whole break-in thing because mm -hmm. usually the manufacturer's breaking the engine, whatever. But you're telling me that so this car actually has an idiot mode that won't let you like it'll change after a thousand miles? Yeah, so it just kind of dumbs everything down a little bit. It still has the full power and all of that. Um, just when you actually hit 933 miles, it's actually going to change some of the characteristics like throttle response is gonna be a little different. Um, just little things like that. It's just basically to keep you from blowing the car up beforehand. <laughs> and I didn't know, so my last GT3, no ITBs. This car has ITBs yes. and then a reworked head. So I'm assuming with an exhaust, it'll probably feel a little bit faster than that? Yeah, um, it'll probably make a big difference having mm -hmm. exhaust on this car. Um, I got one coming besides, Wednesday. Besides, it <laughs> sounds amazing with exhaust on this engine. Um, speedsters have the same engine. Mm -hmm. And when you put exhaust on those, they just scream. So uh, are these speakers gonna be more comparable to what's in the Turbo S? Uh, or is this more comparable to what's in last gen's RS? Because before the GT cars always had really bad stereo yeah. systems. Do you have you have Bose or do you have Burmester? Are, in the oh, I have the Burmester. Yeah. So this isn't gonna be quite as nice, but this is gonna be a lot better than the 991 cool. cars. All right, I want to look around. Oh no! Wait. What? Oh, okay. Thank goodness. You still have a cup holder over there. A cup holder. Yeah. Yeah. Still have one here. And you have that one. There. I was wondering. Yeah. So I guess it will be kind of awkward if you have a drink there. Not your, for me. I'll sit way far forward. may not have to go there. I know. I like the knee pad. That's cool. Little things. So does <laughs> does the owner also own the dealership that Clyde got her car from? Um, it's a partner store, so we're part of a larger dealer group. So Dan, the gentleman you met, doesn't have any interest in that store, but his business partner does. Hmm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I never went to it in person. Oh. I guess they just sent <laughs> they just the shipped it to you. Yeah. Love that. Wait, what? There's no engine. <laughs> That's what? all you can see is that little door there for the cool and yeah, so instead of oh. having the, the ducts in front of the rear wheels collect, this is where it gets the air from. Hmm. Hey, it looks like it's in good shape. No dealer installed swirls. No. I agree. <laughs> dealer. That's a very common thing. You're laughing about oh, that. Yeah, no, I don't. yeah. is gonna live. If you guys get a chance to visit Porsche of Naples, you'll see it here. I hope it goes to a good home, but uh, I know they'll look out for me here. Oh, it'll be just like this one. People will be looking at it and touching it. And How's that make you feel? Putting their greasy <laughs> fingers in <laughs> their greasy fingerprints all over it. <laughs> It'll look good. It's a good home. Mm, and it has an, another orange friend.
<laughs> We're going to be staging for our goodbye photo to the GT3 RS. Gonna line them both up. Take our last photo together. What was it like? <laughs> Watch pedal is very soft. It was weird just getting used to pressing in the clutch and stuff. Oh yeah. man, my photo. I'll just move it again. What? Any last words? Yeah, this is the last time I'll be going to miss you. I really hope whoever gets this car stays in touch. It'd be cool to see it once in a while and just know that it's being taken care of. Please don't install swirl marks. That's the biggest thing. If I buy the car back, I really don't want swirls. But have fun with it. <laughs> The official goodbye, sad but exciting at the same time. Seeing both cars next to each other, getting to appreciate the similarities, but also appreciating the differences. I thought it was gonna be a decent step down going from the RS to a GT3, but I'm excited for the new experience. And the car looks 10 times better in person. I saw two of these in person for the first time ever, and I gotta say it sold me in the car a lot more than just seeing photos online, because initially I didn't like it, and I decided I was gonna wait for the RS. I thought the wing was weird, but it's become to be one of my favorite parts about the car. Oof. They look good together, don't they? So, ultraviolet and lava are kind of two special colors to me. Because back when I went on my first ever Smokies trip with Matt, it was all the 991.1 GT3 RSs that had just come out, and the two most popular colors were lava orange and ultraviolet. Both of them were kind of like the launch colors and were super popular at the time. Whereas now, uh, lava orange on my car was actually one of the more rare ones because no one wanted it because it was like pretty much a launch color of the previous generation. And ultraviolet was no longer an option. And that is why this car is paint to sample. I think there's, I've seen like maybe like three or four of these online so far. So much, much more rare than this, where I think there's like 18 of these in the States. So we'll see how many get built, um, but I love it. I'm excited to drive it and let you guys in on the experience. are so much cooler on the new gen. I love it. All right, well, we just officially got our new GT3. We're gonna go over, we found Craft Sports is right down the road, which is where time we got a 270R. So I'm not planning to film there, but I just wanna go stop there and look at cars. I won't make any more bad decisions, I promise. <laughs> I would love to put my radar here, but they got a giant clock in the way. Yeah. God. Mm. Are right, you complaining? Yep. All right. <laughs> no, I love this car. I'm stoked. The, the, it feels like there's a really lightweight flywheel on it. I don't want to rev it and like maybe like I'm that ignorant, like you know, just revving a car when it's cold. I'm not gonna do that. But anyway, I'll put a blim out on so we won't have that later. But honestly, uh, yeah, no, I'm excited. It's a whole different experience. Now I got a manual. Honestly, since TJ Hunt got an ultraviolet car, I just it's really been my dream to own this car forever since TJ Hunt got one. So that's really the real reason what's going on here. Honestly, just like so many people would make fun of me for having PDK. They're like, why didn't you get a manual? And like, I feel like people thought I was like less of a man for not having manual. So now I got yeah. a manual just to appease other people. It's not for my own personal satisfaction at all. Love that. I'm a man of few words. I love the lack of buttons. Yeah. Oh, and the extended range fuel tank. This thing on the Turbo S. Turbo S is a tiny gas tank. This thing way bigger. 25 gallons, that's like more than my diesel pickup truck. The best thing about these GT cars, guys, if you don't know that, extended range gas tanks, wow, the clutch is such a long throw. It's like a stage seven. Jesus, no axle lift, so we have to go all the way around. Yep. Yeah, that was the one, the two things that this car didn't have spec-wise, since this was someone else's order, I didn't spec it out. The two things I would've put, front axle lift, and I also would've done a carbon roof. But other than that, the car's perfect. Okay, use this clutch. Grabs quite up top. I wonder if people put like pedal stops in them. I'm curious to see what the gearing is going to be like compared to the seven speed. Because like it's not going to be like. Hey, baby. So which way do I go? Um, out the back, take a left. Oh, out the back. 
So he said go out, take a left, then a right, then a right, then a left. Oh, I do need my seat tilters on this. Yeah. There we go. And then a right and a right. It's so weird. It's like, like I just feel like seven times mainly you now. It's a nice short throw. It reminds me a lot of my ISR shifter in my 240SX. Love that. Ready? Listen to this. Ready? Very, very crisp throttle and flywheel response. This is exciting. This is like a whole new experience. So, I should add, my GT350 was one of my favorite cars to track ever. Because it's like a, kind of like a Porsche power band, right? Manual, so super engaging on track. I would choose to drive the GT350 over the GT3 RS all day. So now I have the best of both worlds. I have the GT3 RS without the perfect PDK and more engaging speed bump. Nope. <laughs> We're going a different way. <laughs> wow, it's crazy how much I need those. Uh, they make like a thing that tilts the seat back. Right now I just like sit so far forward. God, that yellow clock. Can I put a little like, a little, little cover over it? <laughs> no, I like it. I know you do. I like the yellow tack too. That's Colette's clock. If you guys ever comment about it in the video, that's Colette's clock. It's mine. It's mine. Yeah, I need to put a, like a, I feel like a stop halfway down on the clutch just because it's such a long throw, but then it grabs up top. Yeah, I don't like that in cars. I'm sure they do it for a reason though. It just slows down your shift because you gotta, you know, my left leg's gotta go. Does it auto blip for you? That's what it just, uh, I think it does in certain modes. I like I the- I think you have to turn it on. So like, I'm not a big fan of, the automated blips because I feel like part of the fun of driving a manual car daily don't get me wrong guys rev match downshifts when you get the perfect crisp like rev match downshift when you're like passing an ice cream shop with a bunch of a bunch of people outside and you're just like bum, bum, bum. like people used to ask me in the GT50 like yo does it do that for you because I was that good so like if I can get to that point with this car you'll feel cool yeah yeah it'd be super hot and like my yeah. girlfriend knows that it's me right so she yeah. like like, even though she's more of like a computer blipper, she knows that A she... computer blipper? I'm a computer blipper? Yeah, like I'm like the real blip, you know? Jesus. It's okay, like no, it's better. But like, I take pride in my blips. Yeah, I know you do. <laughs> she wants to punch me right now. Yeah. Cool. Hey, the GT4, it's blip was nice. It's auto blip. So does it it's roll? very nice. Does it roll like a manual car? Yeah, we're rolling. Are we? So that, I wish I had a handbrake because I use it so much like... I oh, know, I don't like the electric ones. Yeah. I wonder if you can like parking. use it as a momentary switch. You know what I mean? For like a situation mm -hmm. like this. Yeah, I wonder. So, mm, but the, it is, so its on. engagement so, is slow. So it's the brakes on, but will it release if I start to go? <gasps> it did. So you could probably use that as like a hill stop start. Also, these cars come factory with flat shifting. I'm not gonna try it until I confirm how to do it, but that's kind of cool. Yeah, that is cool. No more tuning like my 34. <laughs> That was a weird little blippy it did on me. No, I think that was just you releasing it slower because it's so high up and you kind of got It's got a gas. cool sound to it. Yeah. Craft Sports up here? I think it is. It is. Ooh, that's where I got my TTRS. Audi Naples, what's up? Ready for it? Ready for it? That was your boy. So hot. No track mode right there. Love it. That's how you get the girls with your blips. Is it? Yeah. Tell us more. Tell you. us more about how That's we how get I the got girls. You. Yeah. That's yeah. how I got you. <laughs> yes, <laughs> really they do. Girls don't care about blips. They have no idea. Well, like, they might. That car is loud. I can't talk to him while we drive it. That's what the girls actually think. Yeah, yeah. This is really fun though. Trying to save himself now. It's got so much torques. It's way smoother to drive than it though. I love it. It reminds me a lot of my VTEC Honda that my dad owns. Look, crash sports. Let me blip as I roll up so they know. <laughs> <laughs> this is sick. All right, no more cars. We're just gonna look, okay? Yep, just look. Oh, they got Evos! They got Evos! Oh, hey, before we go and look at me and look at everyone, we're gonna behave. We're not gonna have any cars. This is this is the car of the day. This is the car. We're gonna go look. And the good thing is, he's hungry right now, so he's not gonna last that long in there. Cause you're gonna have to eat. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're leaving.
I'm like literally car shopping for Tommy right now. Put Tommy back on the screen. Get that out loud. Put Tommy back on the screen. Really? Yeah, it's me. I'm looking. What do you, what do you think? think? It's pretty cool. They told me they were getting it. It's a lot of money. Yeah. I want to say, maybe, do they even have a listen? No. All right, this marks the official first fill up with the car. And I got to say, there's absolutely zero part of me that has any sort of remorse whatsoever. I love this thing. I'm very happy with the move. I don't miss the RS at all right now. A couple things I've noticed. But before I get in, I want to tell you kind of uh, another little crucial piece of me getting this car that I didn't mention. So when I first found out about this car, I was with Vaughn. We went out to go do a demo. I get back and one of you guys had given the RTR team a Hot Wheel for me. The exact place I was having the conversation about if I should trade for this car or not with Vaughn, this Hot Wheel was laying on the table when I got back. If that wasn't the universe telling me that this car wasn't assigned, I don't know what was. And I gotta say, it was what pushed me over the edge to consider it a little bit more. I obviously didn't get a car because of a Hot Wheel, but uh, it gave me a little bit more of an incentive to think, oh, maybe I should consider it. So I don't know who you are, but thank you and know that you are a huge reason why I wound up making this move. What's going on over there? Uh, I got the messiest foods. Using Adam's words, I picked out the messiest foods I could possibly pick out at the gas station to eat, but you know what, a girl's got to eat, so. We won't talk about it. <laughs> all right, starting off with the boring, about 200 miles on the car. Uh, I know this is like a super common thing that all 992 people say, the front end feels so good. It is a lot more comfortable as well. It's not as bumpy, not as rigid. Only negative I've noticed with this car in particular so far is the swan neck wing because it's a little bit lower than the RS. It finds itself to be right in my center of visibility in the mirror. So I can't see cars when they're behind me because of where it lands. Other than that though, Pretty much zero complaints, this thing's rad. I know a lot of people always wondered why I had no interest in a GT2 RS. I feel like it's kind of like the same reason why I was kind of getting bored of the GT3 RS. It gets to a point where a car on the road is just too fast to have fun. You need to drive it at its absolute limit. And a GT2 RS is like a rear wheel drive version of my Turbo S. There's pretty much nowhere that I would enjoy that car more than I enjoy the Turbo S. And uh, it's just super expensive, mind bogglingly fast. I'm moving to a manual to actually make my driving a little bit less fast, so I feel like it'll be more enjoyable in the mountains. As opposed to the GT3 RS with PDK, you can carry a lot more speed through corners, where this is more of like, enjoy the experience. One other thing I've noticed with this car, the brakes are a lot more sensitive in a positive manner. My GT3 RS, I would often get in after driving like my Evo or another car, and I would under brake into corners because you have to actually like lay into them. Where that's good because it's a very linear braking feel, this is a lot easier to drive around without having to like really pour into the pedal. Now I've been abiding by the brake in, so I haven't really read this thing out, but I can say the drivability, it feels like it has a lot more torque just Use down the low. Lane to merge onto State Road 570 East. I haven't rubbed it over seven grand yet, but like just driving around, it feels very zippy. It actually feels like a bigger engine than the GT3 RS did. That's like six grand, it's a decent amount to go. This will be the first quarter I've ever taken. Shut out Florida. The shifting is really fun. The gearing's phenomenal. Uh, I've noticed that uh, it actually seems like it's geared a little bit longer than the GT3. And by that I mean at four grand, instead of doing 90 before, we're doing more like 95. Not that I've gone that fast. Um, but that's good because that was always annoying because the GT3 RS would be like, where this is a little bit less. Wee! But 200 miles and I've been enjoying the crap out of this thing. This. This is a, this is a situation. Yeah. Porsche. Should have put it right here. All right. Yeah. Everything else about this car is fantastic though. I feel like my, my job, my passion, my purpose in life is to build these cars that are my idea of perfect. Porsche is like just the cheat code. You basically just buy the most perfect car with the best feeling clutch, the best feeling shifter, the best sounding feeling engine, the best sounding chassis, the best feeling chassis. It's literally, if you're given all the money in the world and someone asks you to build a perfect car, in my opinion, that would be a GT3. Now everyone's opinion differs. This message is not produced to you by Porsche. This is coming straight from my mouth. These cars are cheater cars. They are, if you care about driving, if you care about, if you like appreciate cars for whether it's look, sound, feel, it ticks every box all the time. And being able to track this car for hours and not have it overheat and have the car not skip a beat and not have to do any maintenance. They like, 
took every single request that any car person has ever had in their life and they're like, there's the GT3. This is my first time in a car without tin in Florida in a long time and I was on the fence because I was wanting to do the whole fishbowl look so you can see the cage when I do it. But man, that's bright. Maybe I'll do a slightly less dark tint, or maybe just UV tint. Uh, we got about 250 miles on the car. Uh, depending on whose brake and procedure you follow, I know a lot of people that start ripping on their car once they break 250 miles. I think the factory manual says 1,000. Maybe we'll give her a little more RPM, see how she likes it, but uh, I think I'm gonna just slowly just raise it, you know, 500 RPM or so every couple hundred miles, and sure see what it feels like at 8,000. say stock for stock this thing definitely has a better sound than the GT3 RS at lower RPM at higher RPM I think the GT3 starts to scream a little bit more it feels so smooth on this road best daily ever So I officially made it home with my first ever GT3. And uh, it looks great in the garage. I'm excited to play with this car. Uh, I am very, very happy with my decision. I hope you guys are excited for it. It's a very, very big change from the RS in the best ways possible. Uh, what you guys can come to expect with this car, actually this week we've got some back-to-back -back content. So tomorrow I've got a special video that I uploaded a while back that's gonna go up. And then Wednesday, for all of you guys that aren't members on the channel and didn't get access to the LZ Invitational live stream, I'm gonna be re-uploading the entire stream so everyone can see. It's really cool and I wanna make sure that everyone gets a chance to see it even if you don't wanna spend $10 to become a member. I'm hoping the video after that on Thursday, I'll have an exhaust on this thing already so we can hear this thing start to make some true Porsche noises. And then right after that, I gotta ship it out over to Billy over in Tampa at Presidential where he'll give it the treatment and then uh, it'll get clear broad over at Auto Paint Card. And guys, honestly, I'm not gonna lie with the outlook knowing that I'm gonna trade this car and kind of like I did the RS, I asked myself like, do I wanna still clear Brian and spend all that money to do all that? And even though I know that it's not forever gonna be my car, I still just, it's just the right thing to do. Not doing it, I would just feel so scared driving the car where, you know, it gives you a little bit of confidence to tailgate Karen when she's going 20 miles an hour and a 25, you know? Well, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a lot of fun. Me and Colette enjoyed our little Naples weekend and I have to give another massive thank you to Porsche of Naples. Uh, awesome dealer, awesome people there. It was a really good experience. Nothing but smiles, so thank you guys and I'll see you soon. All right, no more cars. We're just Okay. Yep. Just look. Like I got Evos. I got Evos. Oh, hey, before we go in, look at me and look at everyone. We're gonna behave. We're not gonna have any cars. This is this is the car of the day. This is the car. We're gonna go look. And the good thing is, he's hungry right now, so he's not gonna last that long in there. Cause you're gonna have to eat. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're leaving.